unofficial newspaper files of the early West record many stories of famous and notorious characters of that period. Joseph A. Slade, known as Jack Slade, had the dubious distinction of terrorizing four states in 1864. Through Nevada, Colorado, Wyoming, and Montana, he left a trail of violence and bloodshed, which made him the most wanted outlaw of that period. Express rider is always on time. Come in and have a bite before you change horses. Thanks, Jules. I could use a cup of coffee. Help yourself. Help yourself. While you are having some refreshment, I will look through the mail. Hey, wait a minute, Jules. There's no mail for you in there. Look, Jules, you can't go through the mail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get your hands off of there, will you? Well, I am looking for a letter from my you friend. Can't handle the parcel. Now give it back to me. <laughs> Take him to the crowd. Give me the parcel. Sounds like trouble already, Slade. What's going on here? What do you want? Keep your hands off the United States mail. I'm Jack Slate. I was sent here to take over the station. Oh, I'm sorry I had to kill the Frenchman, but he went for his gun. Better take care of that wound for him. could have gotten into Jules. He knew he didn't have the right to go through the mail. The company's been having trouble with that Frenchman for a long time. When you get to Sterling, tell Superintendent Gorley what happened, huh? Better get going. Take care of him, Bill. is from the railroad paymaster at St. Joe. The railroad is shipping $25,000 by wagon train to Denver. That's a lot of money and a lot of miles. Maybe we could borrow some of that money before the wagons reach Denver. Slade, the shore's a great spot for you. Division agent, right in the middle of the Pony Express route. Wonder how my wife will like it out here. When's she coming? About a week. But I want to get my hands on that payroll before she gets here. <laughs> Pretty woman needs pretty clothes, you know. We need some of Charlie's men for this job. Right. Let's get rid of the Frenchman. Get Charlie, huh?
$25,000 of the railroad's money had been stolen. My partner, Margaret Jones, and I had been assigned to the case. My name is Matt Clark, railroad detective. Right now, we were on our way to Overland City to talk to the division agent of the Pony Express station. We had the stagecoach to ourselves, except for a mysterious woman traveling alone. Allow me, madam. Or should I say miss? Thank you. Drop your handkerchief, Jones. Should I say, miss? Do you suppose her husband understands her, Matt? I'm afraid so, Jonesy. I won't be long. Oh, listen, honey, I know this ain't Denver or New York, but I got a good job here and a chance to make a lot of money. But we're right in the middle of nowhere. There's nothing but desert and snakes and Indians. There's a nice little town about 30 minutes from here called Sterling. It's the Pony Express Division headquarters. Now, look, I'll give you some money. You can go into town, do some shopping, and fix this place up real nice, huh? All right. I'm sorry, but I... Passengers aren't allowed in here, mister. I'll go and unpack. Yeah, I know, but... I thought I took... What's this? Oh. Railroad detective, huh? That's right. Well, that's different. Glad to know you, Clark. Now, look, if it's about that Frenchman, I killed him in self-defense. I don't doubt that a bit. But that's not why I'm here. Oh? I'm investigating a payroll robbery that happened in this territory. I was wondering if you knew anything about it. I heard it was an Indian raid. So did I. But there was something very peculiar about that. There was? Yeah. For one thing, Indians might steal horses, grub, or whiskey, but never money. They know they'd be nabbed if they tried to spend it. Oh, I don't know. Indians will steal anything they can lay their hands on. In this case, I think white men had a hand in it. You see, there's only three or four people that knew when or how the payroll was to be shipped. Now, it's the Saints Indians didn't know anything about it. Oh, I don't think they knew either. I think it was um, just one of those hit and run raids. You know, you might be barking up the wrong tree, Clark. Well, I might at that, but then it's my job to make sure. I'm going to check with Superintendent Garley. I may have to call on you later. Anything I can do, just holler. Thanks a lot. Who's the stranger? A railroad detective. <laughs> He's looking for the payroll robbers. Oh, he is, is he? Well, maybe I better follow that station. You kill one detective, and they'll send five more out here to take his place. Well, I hope you know what you're doing. I do. This detective doesn't suspect us. Maybe not. But I'll tell you one thing. We better not look through any more mail pouches around this place. Just pick up the mail before it's due here.
sorry, dear, but you'll have to go into town alone today. But why? Oh, you have to sort the mail. Business. Sometimes business and pleasure don't mix. Oh, uh, this should take care of today's shopping trip. Oh, this will be more than enough. And by the way, darling, don't forget to post the letter to Mother. No, I won't. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Bringing the mail pouch out here in the open. Haven't you got better sense? Mr. Gorley, if we could find out who got that dispatch, we'd know for sure who robbed those wagons. Well, Jules Bonnet was suspected of tampering with the mails. Yeah, but he was dead when the Indians raided the wagons. Yes, I know. That's what makes it such a mystery. Their old money was stolen in this territory, and so was the dispatch. How many Pony Express stations are there in this division? Just ten. <laughs> doesn't narrow it down too much, does it? <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> Get this man to a doctor. Joe, come and give us a hand. What a small world. Well, hello. Are you living in Sterling? Yes, I have relatives here. Oh. I was just going in to pick out some curtain material. Oh, what color did you want? Well, I'm not quite sure. My husband was going to help me, but at the last minute, one of the riders came in with a mail pouch, and he had to stay at the station. You know, I don't know whether I should get red checks or, um... I think so, don't you? Oh, the color. Yes, I do think you need something bright. What did your husband think? Well, I didn't get a chance to ask him. When the half-breed brought the mail, he sent me into town alone. You know, sometimes I think men are more interested in their work than they are their wives. <laughs> I suppose so. Would you like to come and help me pick it out? Oh, I'd love to, but I have promised to meet someone. Oh, romance? Not that nice young man I saw you with on the stage. <laughs> it might be. I'll see you later. Fine. Bye-bye. Hi, Matt. Hi, how's the writer doing? Well, the doctor says he's got a 50-50 chance. Well, that's swell. Say, we got another mystery on our hands. Oh, what's that? The mail pouch he was carrying is missing. <laughs> well, that figures. I have something important to tell you. I just met Virginia Slade. Her husband was supposed to come into town with her, but decided to stay behind to take care of the mail. But he's not interested in the mail, only in the writers. She said that half-breed who works for Slade brought in a mail pouch. Maybe that's our missing pouch. Yeah. Let's take a ride out to the station and see what's going on out there. No, I don't think that's a good plan. What do you know about Slade? Well, not very much. He was hired on the recommendation of his wife's family. They own part of the company. Oh? Well, Slade could be as clean as a hound's tooth, but we haven't dug up anything in two days we've been here. This could be a break for us. If he is rifling those mail pouches, Matt, he'll try to cover up. I think you're right, Jonesy. But I've got a plan. I hope it'll work. Now, here's what we'll do. Things were finally beginning to add up. Everything pointed to Slade. However, there was no positive proof. Slade was tricky. But I had a few tricks up my sleeve, too. Oh, hello, Clark. Hi, Slade. Sure glad you came. There's a Pony Express rider missing. Bill and I have been out all morning looking for him. I just left Superintendent Gourley's office. He got there. Oh, sure glad to hear that. But uh, why did he bypass this station? He was shot. Pretty bad, too. Oh, be doggone. Is he going to pull through? Yeah, he's got a fair chance. Good. Slade, I guess you had it figured out right. That writer said it was Indians who jumped him and took his mail pouch. I told you that, didn't I? Yeah, you sure did. I guess that just about lets me out. Engines are a job for the cavalry. It's been nice knowing you. I'll be heading back to Kansas City. Oh, don't rush off, Clark. 
It's a long ride. How about a cup of coffee? Nah, don't mind if I do. Virginia! Oh, hello, Mr. Clark. Howdy, ma'am. One of the riders just came in, dear. Oh, thank you. Excuse me, Clark. Won't you sit down? I'll bring you some coffee. Thank you. Hi, Jimmy. Hi, Mr. Slade. Why don't you go in and get a cup of coffee, huh? I'll have Charlie get you a fresh horse. Thanks, I will. Well, hello. Morning, Mrs. Slade. I have some nice homemade apple pie. How about it, boys? Well, I don't mind if I do. How about you, Jimmy? Well, sounds fine to me. Apple pie coming up. All set? Yeah. Look at that, Jimmy. Well, Jimmy, your pony's all saddled up and ready to go. <laughs> oh, no, you don't, Slade. Your wife just bought us this wonderful pie. We're going to eat it before we go, eh, Jimmy? Yes, sir. <laughs> well, in that case, I think I'll have some myself. Catch up with you later. This is the works, Bill. A fortune coming through on the stagecoach. Not only the payroll for the Comstock mines, but some of the gold that was minted in Denver as well. Bill will be millionaires. With all that loot, we might run into a cavalry escort. <laughs> we do will have enough of Charlie's Indians to take care of him. I was telling... Hello, dear. Jack, I'd like to see you alone. What's the matter, dear? You look upset. I saw you take a letter out of the pouch and put it in your pocket. Why? Oh, it was an important letter addressed to me. This is addressed to the railroad paymaster. This is none of your business. Jack, why did you steal it? Because it gives me information I want. Information about payrolls and money? Yes. Yes, money. Money I needed to buy you pretty clothes and take you to the big city to live. I don't want that kind of money. Shut up! You better send that dispatch with the next rider. You keep your mouth shut. You're choking me! Well, I'll do a good job of it, too, if you don't keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Slade had read the dispatch and was waiting for the stagecoach carrying the so-called payroll. If Slade decided to use his Indian cohorts again, we were ready for them. The cavalry had been tipped off. So was a posse that had been sent out by Tom Corley, the division manager. There's the stagecoach with the money. Go tell your Indian friends. What do we need the Indians for? We can hold up that stagecoach easy by ourselves. Just plain it safe. Maybe that stagecoach is traveling alone. And again, maybe there's an escort not too far behind. Come on. <laughs> Slade 
Slade's Indian renegades were after us, but I didn't see Slade himself. It bothered me because if Slade didn't show up, our whole plan would fall through. you've taken one dispatch too many. Posse's here to pick you up. Now get going. I turned Slade over to the posse. Bill was dead, Charlie was dead. The Indians had been captured by the cavalry. What I didn't know until later was that the posse turned into a vigilante committee and took the law into its own hands. On the afternoon of March the 10th, 1864, Slade was taken to the vicinity of Virginia City and hanged by the vigilantes. Virginia Slade. Did you notice she has two tickets? Yeah. One for Slade's body in the baggage car up front. She claimed it for burial. Hello, Virginia. For you, I'm sorry it had to happen like this. He was a thief and a murderer. But maybe he wanted the money for me because he knew I wasn't happy living in the desert. Yeah. You know, Jonesy, a man like Slade who robs and kills wants people to think he does it for somebody else. But he really does it for only one person, himself. Mm -hmm. 